Okay, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this later for our next deck, which is going to be Gruel Stompy. You may remember this deck from about a week ago. We played it one time and it had a really quick uh, 5-0. And so um, I want to try it again. You know, like we just kind of steamrolled some opponents last time. I remember like we had our first two matches were uh, kind of like beginner type decks. Um, but then we had three impressive wins over um, regular decks after that. Um, so question here is why are we playing to Guildgate? And we're, I'm playing the Guildgate because our, our mana is pretty tough. We have Steel Leaf Champions, so we need lots of green mana for Steel Leaf Champion. But then we also have Double Red with Phoenix and Hellkite. So like our, our mana is actually pretty tough. So that's why we have a couple Guildgates in there to, to help out um, a little bit with, with that. Um, but yeah, we're, we're just, you know, trying to curve out here. Um, we have our, uh, our early pressure, like we have the explore package, which is, you know, obviously, which is of course just really good. The branch Walker, Jade light, wild growth Walker for, you know, those of you that play any green decks, you know how good the explore package is. And then we have our beefiness with the steel leaf champion and gruel Spellbreaker. Awesome. Three drops that put a lot of pressure on the opponent. Really good on turn two. If you have land war elf, and then into Steel Leaf or Spellbreaker. That's awesome. And then if our opponent like survives our early pressure and you know it kind of stabilizes on the ground, we have these flyers that um, are really difficult to deal with. Like these mythic these mythics here, Rekindling Phoenix, kind of keeps on uh, keeps on putting a bunch of pressure on the opponent in the air. And then Hellkite uh, can do a whole lot as well. And and so yeah, we just kind of have all this stuff. And then. Um, and then to go along with these, the Steel Leaf Champions and Spellbreaker, when our opponent's trying to like double block these creatures or you know like even single block, but you know like they're difficult creatures to block. We have Colossus. That Colossus was was really impressive for us. We didn't use Collision a ton last time, but Colossus, uh, given our creatures plus four plus two and Trample, did a whole lot for us. I think we killed a Niv Mizzet with Collision though. That was pretty cool. So there we go. Um, let's, uh, let's play some Gruul Stompy. Try to stomp over the competition. Where's my deck? Gruul Stompy. Stomp. 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 There it is. Hey, Eyes enough. All right, getting Demir mid-range YouTube video ready to go. Fortunately, we're going to need a little bit more than one tap land as far as uh, mana base is concerned. So let's ship this one. Sand's not very good either. Let's hope let's hope our deck just is really kind to us and does not give us any lands. It gives us lots of spells um, and fills the curve out for us here. Okay, okay. I'll do. It's a two drop. So it looks like we're playing against some Sultai Control. I could see this being a Nexus deck. I could see this just being like a a Karn Vraska, you know, bunch of Ritual of Sit kind of control deck as well. I don't know, is anybody else picture blurry? Plague Crafter. 
So Plague Crafter is a, a creature that's a removal spell. Which you don't see too often with Searcherous Canto, which is like a, a card that cares about spells, not creatures. It's kind of a, a pairing you don't see too often. Uh, did we have Rekindling Phoenix on top? We've drawn back-to-back -back lands. Not what we want to be drawing at all. That's a good card. Okay, cool. Is something wrong with the settings? Gotcha. All right, Hellkite. We're going to need you to do a lot of work because that's three lands in a row for us to draw. We kept one spell in our hand. We can't afford to draw, you know, three spells in a row. But here we are. Okay, I'm doing the Demir mid-range. YouTube uh, thumbnail. Looks good. Nice thought erasure. Uh, they got to s surveil another thought erasure into the graveyard. So as Kant is going to flip here, next turn, and one mana away from being able to double activate the Hellkite. Kindling Phoenix is awesome. Good, real good uh, card there to have. Hey, Dirk. Oh, thanks, MTG Dren Drenwood. Sorry, back back to the chat now. Uh, Viper, yeah, no, my my power went out because uh, of the windstorm Sunday night. I didn't, I haven't had electricity from Sunday night to Wednesday night. So yeah, no, it was real, real rough. Um, but yep, I'm glad to be back. I'm not, not expecting to miss time again, you know, but of course I wasn't really expecting that either. Yeah, it was it was really rough. Hey Marco. Crisis is awesome with Circuitous route. Well, this could be really bad for us.
Yeah, I, I'm doing the 12-hour stream today, of course, and I'm planning on doing the other one uh, this weekend, probably Saturday. Um, and I'm just kind of planning on streaming more in general this... Uh, like this weekend and just kind of, you know, like this week and everything, just make up for these days I've been gone. So do I want to attack out? It's weird they love me on top with that. I kind of want to attack with both my things. Put them down to three. Like, I kind of assume they're going to block Rekindling Phoenix. No, I won't attack. They block Branch Walker, they go to two. I don't know. So, like, we have, like... Skargan Hellkite and Gruel Spellbreaker is cards that are, um, that can have haste. Hey, good job, Dirk. Made Mythic. Way to go. Yep, Spellbreaker, good draw. Ah, uh, they found a Sabotage, though. We'll put him down to one. We'll sack the, the branch walker to do five. So Hellkite would be like our best draw. Like we, we can just like play Hellkite and just activate it immediately as long as it doesn't get countered. Guy is he's back here. Yeah. Yep, Hawkeye's back there. Now it's looking really unlikely that we're going to be winning this game. Considering they have Sinister Sabotage. We have to draw like... You have no place we have to like run a runner. Plans. Draw, you know, something that they have to counter um, into something that they have to counter. Just auto tapping everything too, though, so this is just taking forever. It's like, all right, well, two counter spells, syncopate with all the mana they have. So it didn't quite get there. Got really close. <clears throat> Let's get Vivian's in here, Carnage Tyrant, uh, Cinder Vines, and Rhythm of the Wild. 
I'm gonna take out Wild Growth Walker. Um, maybe Colossus. Yeah, we can probably just take out Colossus. This is 62. Maybe two Spellbreakers or Steel Leaves. I want to cut this three drop slot a little bit. I guess Hellkites aren't usually the best. Um, you know, being pretty expensive and easy to deal with. Yeah, let's trim two Hellkites. <laughs> Rekindling Phoenix is an awesome card. I really like it. The art's really cool. Um, just the card. The card's really good. Yeah, I certainly like Rekindling Phoenix a lot. Let's go here. Our opponent's name means cat in the hat in German, huh? Nice. Well, this is better than, uh, you know, have, keeping one spell. Cat with a hat. I, I might say cat in a hat. Cat with a hat. All right, so let's assume they're going to Thought Erasure next turn, and they're going to take one of these two. Would I rather have Cinder Vines on the battlefield, or would I rather have Rhythm of the Wild on the battlefield? I think I would rather have Rhythm of the Wild, right? Yeah, let's go Rhythm. Putting the counter on Branch Walker, like just the two damage with the haste. Uh, I I like the th like you know being able to continue late attack for three that more than the two, but I could I could see that being wrong. Come on, thought erasure, thought erasure, thought erasure, thought erasure. You can do it. Dang. All right, they're gonna be taking some damage. So even if they want to play like Moment of Craving, they gain zero life. All right, Dirk, take care. Have a good day at work. Phone is playing very slowly. Yeah, they presumably have some counter spells if they're destroying the Rhythm of the Wild. But each each spell they play, they taken two. That really does add up quickly. I should have sacrificed the Cinder Vine to destroy that Wilderness Reclamation. I'll do that next turn. I forgot the Cinder Vines does that and everything. I, sh I should have sacrificed there.
We're gonna do that at, you know, at their, uh, their end of their second main. Let them have this, you know, this mana here that they're most likely gonna spend. And uh, if they, you know, play a non-creature spell, have both Cinder Vines there. Whoops. I just missed lethal by letting the Contempt resolve it. I should be dead. I messed that up. Yeah, the only thing they can play is a creature spell, so they'd have to play, like, Hydroid Krasis. Like, is like, the only card that they could have played to survive there. Is, like, Hydroid Krasis. So, the sacrificing does deal two damage to them also. But, yeah... Okay, going to game three. <laughs> Our enchantments did all the work there. I don't think this is a mulligan, uh, but this is this is the kind of hand that our opponent can certainly beat. I uh, really want to draw. Like a two drop here. Would love to draw like a Cinder Vines to be able to play early. But this is the um, this is the kind of hand that that our opponent's going to be good against. You know, just a bunch of creatures. All right, which three drop do you want? Jade Lights are probably the best three drops for us because they can, you know, refill our hand and everything like that. All right, I need to make sure to play Forest next turn. So if I play the Rootbound Crag, it's going to come into play. Tapped. Eh. Oh, graveyard. I'd rather look for, you know, I like how we just get to, get to draw a card there, but, I you know, I want to look for Vivians, um, Carnage Tyrants, things like that. All right, King Toll, have a good dinner. See you back here in a bit. No, no, there's no Null Hide. I don't have any Null Hide Feroxes in the deck. This is the kind of matchup where Null Hide Ferox would certainly be good, but I don't have any in the deck. I'll keep the Cinder Vine. Cinder Vines can destroy that as Kanta. Destroying as Kanta is really important. I'm gonna just do it right now before they get to, you know, do any more scrying or anything like that. So they don't know about the two lands that we've drawn. 
two more lands that we've drawn recently and have in hand. Ugh, they have another Escanta. Rough. Certainly I'm like worried about Ritual of Set. I don't want to just like throw out everything for Ritual of Set. Where's Vivian at? Uh. Hmm. I don't even know if this is really that good at this point of the game. Like, they're going to be able to flip their Escanta. I don't know. What do y'all think of the Cinder Vines here? I guess it's probably better than a random card. It's just it's just not like my better cards. You know, it's not Vivian or Carnage Tyrant. Um, that's not like my best cards. Or even like Hellkite. But, yeah, I probably should keep. It's probably better than drawing another land. Um... Whatever the card was on top, they really liked it, though. They kept it on top. All right, so they have their one card in hand. They have one card in hand, we have a 3-3. Three, three. And they're drawn first. Don't think that we're really in a, a great position here. Good news is we've... Yeah, now we have nothing. But good news is we have gone through a whole lot of our deck. Gone through more of, the deck, more of our deck than they have. So a card like Vivian is probably right around the corner, right deck? Vivian Reed, right around the corner. I don't know what card they kept on top. Whether it was like, it was probably Contempt or Chupacabra. They kept one of those two cards on top instead of flipping Escanta. But I don't think that that was worth it. I think they should have flipped Escanta. This will keep an eye. I am master of machines. If I draw the Hellkite, I'm going to want to be able to play Hellkite and activate Hellkite immediately. No. I drew a Contempt. Ugh. A master builds with ease. Keeping the forest, though, because of, like, dispersal. My device we almost had them. Finished, as are you. Contempt draw, though. Okay. That's at nine. If I, if I give the Hellkite haste, they just chump block, and I, I just never get to, I can't ever activate this ability. I think just being able to activate the ability with these 1-1s one is a whole lot better than them just chump blocking every turn. You remember, you cannot activate this ability if you give it haste. So yeah, otherwise I would have definitely just gave it haste if I could activate that ability. Still... How thick headed are you? If I hit them to four, it, like basically, if they if they don't kill the Hellkite, they're dead, kind of thing. Whether they're at four or five, if they do kill the Hellkite, I need to keep this Tezzeret from ultimating. So attacking the Tezzeret makes more sense of like 
making it another turn for the Tezzeret to not be ultimated. Because if, if they didn't get rid of the Hellkite, I was going to be it killing them. The ideal subordinate. I guess the thing is I could have still kept the land in hand uh, and tapped the land war elf. Not expecting a dispersal by that time, though. All right, deck. Let's get another Hellkite, or you know, something big. Vivian, Tarnish Tyrant, Basic Forest. So I'm really glad I attacked the Tezzeret. Otherwise, they would be ultimating right now. I learned a few tricks on Kaladesh. Uh. Deck just flooded out so hard. Ugh. We drew the one Hellkite. We, we had one. Moment. We had one really good draw. All right, go get a permanent card. Put it on the battlefield. Thanks, deck. Thanks for another land. We've gone through as many cards as they have. So now even a Carnage Tyrant, they can go get another Playcrafter. Shall we begin? Four lands in a row. Ugh. Well, I guess I just should not have should not have played that other land. I guess, you know, we got our Hellkite dispersal. I could have could have played around that, used the land war off his mana to activate. You know, didn't even necessarily need to activate immediately. So, that was something I could have done differently. It's frustrating to go through half the deck and not see one of our five. Important cards of Vivians or Carnage Tyrants. But that's how it went. Um, so we're on the play with this six. We have a whole lot of green sources because we are a Steel Leaf Champion deck, so I'm hoping that, you know, with the Scry, we get to find a green source here. And we're in there. Um, I don't I don't know what the best gruel deck's the frenzy deck, honestly. We went we went 5 0 with this deck last time we played it, you know, we just you know, we just had like pretty bad draws that that game. I wouldn't necessarily say this deck's worse than the Gruel Frenzy deck because of those draws that we just had. Is how that game played out. Electrostatic field's gonna probably do a lot of work for the opponent. Yeah, we yeah, we have not had not had a good mana day today.
going upstairs. Ah, that's why. That chain whirler is really awkward for us with like wanting to play a land whirl. That seemed like a really good turn. That was a good three mana. They get lightning bolt. One mana divination and shock. That's pretty good. And also dealt three damage to me for free with this electrostatic field. It's a pretty good turn. So yeah, our opponent's definitely just playing the, the chain roller there, right? So like no reason to play the land war elf out uh, previously. So we're attacking with the Spellbreaker here because we, we do need to keep the pressure on the opponent. You know, like, the, we're at eight. Like, they only need a couple burn spells to finish us off. I can't really sit back and um, let our opponent just draw a couple burn spells and finish us off. So I'm attacking with the Spellbreaker. All right, so any spell kills us. I guess we can make it so a creature doesn't kill us. Or like, we can at least make it so like the one, two haste creature doesn't kill us. But basically everything else. Like if they have any any spell or if they have the Yeah. Or any creature that's not just the one two, you know, like Chain Whirler would kill us, Pyromancer would kill us, Firebrand kills us. Basically everything does. Don't really have a sideboard for mono red. Gonna try to draw a little better. Or have my opponent not draw so good. They drew really, really well. Yeah, that is basically playing modern, right? Hey, Scold in mind. Yeah, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. I mean, Phoenix is good. Can I just sit around and wait till Phoenix, though? This is a little better. Um, 
Except for we do have the awkward Gruel Guild Gate Rootbound Crag starts. We're looking at like turn three Wild Growth Walker right now. Can't really keep that other Wild Growth Walker. Gotta try to draw a land. Any chance they don't kill Wild Growth Walker this turn? Nope. Alright, Steely, if you can do it. You can do it, Steel Leaf. Dead in uh, three more turns, thanks to the Steel Leaf Champion. Uh, let's go Branch Walker here, because we can potentially do another Branch Walker with a land drop. There we go. Now, I really want this Branch Walker to be a 3 2. I don't want Chain Whirler. Dang it. I really don't want Chain Whirler to be able to kill both Branch Walkers. I wanted that one to be a 3-2. But as long as they don't have Chain Whirler, that's good for us. Attack. Get rid of this field. So we're not doing so bad. only sitting at a couple cards, but light up the stage. Really gets to go through their library quickly. They didn't have a bolt first, like bolting Phoenix and then uh, playing Chain Whirler to like kill the Phoenix token. Also, that would have been pretty bad. So we're relying on Phoenix to finish this one out. If I if I block with the Rekindling Phoenix, then Firebrand takes out the egg token. So I can't really block with Rekindling Phoenix here. Oh, come on, deck. I'm 
Remember when we had a two lander and I had to put the wild growth walker on the bottom because we didn't have any lands? They're playing Pilgrim also and electrostatic field. Crazy, man. How are they playing all these creatures and wanting like electrostatic field and like all the spells? They have a lot of creatures in their deck. That's crazy. So they got two of these two Colossus for two Brontodon as like another 3 4 to block. They're going to have all these creatures. Valmishra. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for that sub. I really do appreciate that. That's sub number eight on the day. How can Rhythm be good against Mono Red? You can't... They're way too fast for you to take a turn off of, like, turn three to, to cast Rhythm of the Wild. You... You can't play this card against Mono Red. Land War Elf on the draw is a lot worse. Because um, of Chain Whirler. But I think I'm still going to have it in the deck. I think I want that more than Colossus. But that one's pretty close. Yeah, you, you just can't take the turn off against Mono Red. Of like playing an enchantment that, that doesn't do anything on its own. You just... You just can't do it. Well, we're going to try to find a victory through exploring. This is the kind of hand that doesn't beat, like, this doesn't beat the better hands of, that Mono Red has, but this can beat, like, a, a bad Mono Red hand. Um, them not having a. A turn one play is is good for us. Yeah, but you have to just keep playing cards that affect the battlefield against Mono Red. They have Steamkin also. Cause like I'm I'm not gonna play the the rhythm of the wild before I play a steel leaf or a jade light or anything. It's just not quite worth it. So we're going down to twelve. Just lightning strike the steel leaf. Oh come on, opponent. I thank you, but that was not a good play. Um Yeah, that lightning strike definitely should have gone upstairs. We should be at six right now. Not sure if I should be playing Steel Leaf here over the Wild Growth Walker. I think if I had if I had a fourth land drop, I'd be playing the Steel Leaf, um, where I could you know, because I, I want to play like Wild Growth plus Jade Light like same turn kind of thing. The other thing about playing Steel Leaf first is it could like take my opponents. Um, could take like their burn spells. So we'll see if they have Shock. They've already played two shocks, but it, it seems like they have a shock for like how they've been on their firebrand. It seems like they have another shock. No shock. And that's probably game then. Uh, sure, Colossus is fine. 
All right, I think we got this. Hey, what's up, Clue King? I, uh, because of the windstorm Sunday night, uh, my electricity went out and it was out all the way until last night. So I've been sitting here with no electricity. I was not able to stream. It was rough. Um, when stuff like this happens, I always update in my Discord channel. If you're not, um, if you're not in the Discord channel, of course, feel free to join there. That's where you can always, that's where I'm always updating. That's where I always update the stream stuff in the Discord channel. So I just put the link there in the chat. If you're watching this later on on YouTube, the disc, you can find the Discord link uh, in the, the YouTube description as well. All right, and Wild Growth Walker put the game away against Mono Red, and we get the win. One and one. Thanks, Nero. Thanks for the bit there. But yeah, been rough last three days, for sure. Without having any power. <laughs> yeah, it's been tough, but we're back. All right, Branch Walker, do your thing. Thank you. It's exactly what we want right now to make up for us. Uh, make up for our mulligan. We want our explore creatures to draw lands. Especially against the blue-black deck. So yeah, we're doing our 12-hour stream today. Um, I'll be doing another 12-hour stream this weekend. Probably... Probably Saturday, you know, just kind of to see how I start, how we're going. I have to kind of get back into to streamer shape after just doing nothing but laying on my couch in my bed, like underneath covers and stuff, because it's been, you know, real cold the last few days. But I'm, I am planning on just kind of streaming more you know, in general, the next few days and everything. I'll probably be getting on before 3 o'clock uh, most of the days. Like, maybe I'll be getting on around now or so. These Colossuses are, are not so good here. Not so good at all. They are good against, like, you know, Diva Sanities that our opponents could be playing. Red mana. It's a very hasty hostage shaker. They really don't need to cast that hostage shaker there. Like the hostage shaker is just not ending the game very quickly. They can they can just wait. Uh, Cause you know they know they know my hand of two cards that are good to take with hostage shaker. Like, they certainly have more hostage takers in their hand, of course. But they can still wait.
All right, let's try not to mold a five and then draw three collisions. Especially when they they had multiple duresses. We have four total spells in the deck, and we just had them all in our hand. I don't really care about the Thief of Sanities that much. I'm going to take those collisions out. Play a couple Carnage Tyrants and Vivians. Um, maybe not. Certainly want all the Vivians. I'm not sure if I want Carnage Tyrant. Yeah, I probably want Carnage Tyrant. I'm going to take out one Wild Growth Walker. I don't even think I really care about Carl Harpooner against Thief of Sandy. I just... We have Vivian, uh, Phoenix, and Hellkite as, like, things that kind of deal with Thief of Sandy. We can also just race it. I don't think I need to be too overly concerned about the card. All right, we have a seven we can keep. Sevens we can keep have been pretty nice to us. Go, Steel Leaf, go. Being on the play, having Steel Leaf on turn two into Rekindling Phoenix on turn three. Doesn't get too much better than that. <laughs> opponent's just casting Discovery. That's not a good one to have here, opponent. Thing about Thought Erasure and Discovery, they they do not affect the battlefield. And we have just been playing spells that affect the battlefield. Yep, two two Thursday. <laughs> Pretty good day. Don't wait till turn four to play something that affected the battlefield. A little too late there. We have it. It's been a very average day today. Gone 2 2, 2 2. We are currently 1 and 1, and in this game, we are 1 and 1 as well. Hope we get this win because otherwise, if we lose this game, then we're going 1 2 and we're breaking our streak. Kai's Wrath would have been rough for me. I did not play around Kai's Wrath at all. That could have been what they were looking for with Discovery. Don't see Kai's Wrath from that deck too much, but maybe they have it. Not nearly as fast this game. Yeah, they're they're an S okay, yeah, they're an Esper mid-range deck with like, you know, Hero Precinct 1 and stuff like that. Mm. 
So, I'll go one one counter. There's not like a huge difference between three three and four four here, but I think the the big thing is Orzov, or like the Bell Hunt, whatever the the Bell Hunt is, the the three four. I think it's good to be a four four body for that card. Dr. Random with the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the channel, Dr. Random. Thanks for joining, sub number nine on the day. Seraph of the Scales is awesome. Is there... Yeah, Seraph of the Scales is awesome. for the second month there saying keep being awesome well thank you so much i do appreciate that i'll be back just like before all right so that's sub number 10 on the day so we're cracking open a pack after this match, which is not looking good for us, but it still has 10 cards in hand. Deputy Detention, Hostage Taker, these are two cards that are really, really good against me. Um, so, looks pretty bad. The thing we do have though is Steel Leaf Champion, which our, our opponent doesn't, you know, they can't block Steel Leaf Champion. Uh, with the cards they have on the battlefield. Um, they're keeping two mana up. Dang it. I guess that's why. So I could play Vivian and kill the Thief of Sanity. Um, I don't know. That's really bad. I'm having that cast down. Basically, this Seraph of the Scales was also just incredible, because um, you know I couldn't I couldn't play Vivian and minus and kill Seraph because then like these things kill Vivian. Same thing if I played Vivian there, these these flyers would kill Vivian. Everything they've had has just been really good. It's lined up perfectly for them. All right, well I'm certainly killing that thing. Let's see if you're. No one said restoration was painless.
Well, at least we got rid of that hero precinct one. I think it's not the worst. I wonder if taking out the it's it seemed like taking out Collision Colossus has been a mistake. Um, Collision Colossus being a card that you know can it can get through can it help us attack through all these things would be really nice. Let's do this again. I need that Steel Leaf Champion to live. Yeah, hostage taker, deputy detention. Awesome cards when you have zero removal, and I have zero removal. I have to put that Steel Leaf Champion in the graveyard, of course, because of Thief of Sanity. Uh, I, I don't want them to be taking Thief of... I don't want them to be taking Steel Leaf Champion. I don't think we're winning this game, though. I can't, can't imagine it. So I'm thinking that I should have just taken out... I think... I, so with the sideboarding, I think I should have taken out Wild Growth Walker completely and um, kept in three Colossus. I think if the if the the Wild Growth Walkers I had in my hand Yeah, I drew two of them. If those two were collision colossus, I think we're in a lot better spot. Because Collision Colossus on the on the Carnage Tyrants, you know that, that's something that like you know just kind of playing the games though, just kind of realize that you know if we have Colossus um, on the Carnage Tyrant when they make like those huge like you know they make those blocks and kill all those things and we use Colossus um, and give a plus four plus two, that would have been really nice. So I think that's I think that's something that. Um, I think I miss miss sideboarded there. Uh, in that matchup with all all their things, and especially how they make so many like one one uh, chump blockers and everything, the the wild growth walkers just didn't matter. Um, they were just pretty bad. So I think I think I should have not had the wild growth walkers in my deck. Um, and should have had Colossus in my deck instead. Uh, I I think we could have won that game three if. The two wild growth walkers I drew were two colossuses, but you know you live you learn. Um, thanks, Othian. Yeah, did not have power uh, for three days there, so it was really rough because um, of the windstorm. But we're back. So there we go. There's Gruel Stompy. Was not nearly as successful as the the five O that we had before. Um, 
but I still think it's a pretty good deck. And I think in particular, I think this deck is really good against Mono Blue. Uh, but, you know, we didn't play against Mono Blue. I think it's good against Control decks and good against Mono Blue. Um, but Esper, Esper midrange. Uh, without without me playing, like, since I'm not playing Lava Coils or any kind of removal, uh, Esper midrange was pretty tough whenever they have all sorts of Deputy Detentions and Hostage Takers. That's a tough matchup. Um, but there we go. All right, Gruel Stompy. So if you're watching this later on on YouTube, of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button over there. But uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.